today we are going to discuss the twisting process and twisting elements, various types of elements which are there to twist the fibers and to convert it into a yarn. The question that comes to our mind that why do you need twist? What is the importance of twist? Twist gives strength to the yarn. For spun yarn, this is very much required. In the case of filament yarn, twist is not really required to impart strength. But when you talk about the spun yarn, which is made of staple fibers, twist needs to be given in order to impart strength. How, how does it impart strength? Twist causes all fibers to follow helical path around the yarn axis. The very purpose of twisting is that we force the fibers to follow helical path or spiral path. And under strain, radial forces generate in the fibers, which in turn causes all fibers to grip each other, resisting slippage. So, we force the fibers to follow spiral path and by doing so, we have an advantage that whenever such a structure is strained or we stretch it, immediately radial forces will be generated and these radial forces will cause the fibers to grip each other. That is, that means basically some normal forces will be generated which will cause resistance to slip and hence the structure as a whole will give you strength. A twisted structure is shown in the right hand side. We can see the way the fibers are seen on the surface of the yarn. This helical nature of the fibers on the surface of the yarn is quite visible. Here. What is the unit of twist? That is, we have to measure twist or we have to quantify twist. First of all, how to quantify the twist? The unit is turns per inch or turns per meter. Therefore, twist is number of turns in a given segment or length of yarn divided by length of yarn. If we count the number of full turns which are there in a given length and the after counting whatever figure we get if we divide it by the length of the yarn or the segment of yarn that we have chosen then the ratio of these two will give you twist and the unit will be turns per inch or if we express in terms of meter it could be turns per meter. It basically indicates how many full turns are there in a unit length of yarn. Yarn twist in the case of ring spinning is usually kept between 14 to 44 turns per inch. In 1 inch depending upon the count of yarn or the fineness of fiber or length of fiber we, go, we are going to use. the range of twist can vary between 14 to 44 turns per inch. Just imagine 1 inch basically means 25 mm. So, if we have 25 turns per inch as an example, that means in 25 millimeter we have 25 full turns. So, each millimeter of the fiber is basically following a helical path and each millimeter is having one full turn that is the typical you know, number of turns that you use and because of this radial force is generated and as a result we can get sufficient strength in the assembly of fibers. Twist also determines therefore the inclination angle of fibers with respect to yarn axis. For a given yarn count more twist means more inclinations. So, the inclination angle also can be measured 
though it is really little difficult to measure because we need a microscope to see the inclination of the fibers, but one can also measure the inclination with respect to the yarn axis and we can see the more twist we give the more is the inclination. For the same twist level the inclination angle for yarns of two different counts will be different. The inclination angle can truly characterize the characteristics of the yarn. The characteristics of the yarn would basically mean what whether the yarn will be soft or hard. This important characteristics whether the yarn will be twist lively or not is all basically depends on the inclination angle. Therefore, the angle also sometimes comes to the picture in order to truly understand the characteristics of spun yarn. We will discuss a bit about twist factor because this term will come very often when we you know, try to spin a yarn from different fibers, we want to spin yarns of different counts, twist factor will come into the picture. So, let us see the diagram on the right hand side and what is shown here is that the cylindrical part shows one full turn of twist. A surface fiber shown by this yellow line, this orange line, not yellow line, orange line, one complete turn is shown. So, it is following a helical path and the inclination angle is alpha. Let us say the yarn diameter is dy. If we open up this yarn envelope, which is equivalent to one turn of twist, we can see the orange line, the fiber now makes a diagonal line and the circumference of this yarn which is pi dy is basically the length of this rectangle now and the height which was equivalent to one turn of twist we can find it out by taking the ratio 1 upon t where t is the number of turns in unit length of yarn. And therefore, we can write from this simple geometry that tan alpha is pi dy by L or pi dy by 1 upon t because L as seen in this diagram is 1 upon t where t is the number of turns per unit length. Therefore, tan alpha is pi dy t and hence t is tan alpha by pi dy. Now, we know that dy is related to yarn count by this relationship, by the Pierce relationship is a very you know, classical uh, formula relating yarn diameter to count of yarn expressed in English system. So, if we replace dy by 1 upon 20 root over any, then we get this and we get it t is equal to tan alpha into 28 root over any by pi. Therefore, t we can write that in this equation tan alpha would be given twist is constant 28 pi they are all constant. Therefore, tan alpha 28 pi this we can combine them together and represent by k. So, t becomes now k into root over any or any is basically the yarn count in English system. So, the k which is tan alpha into 28 by pi is known as twist factor. 28 by pi if we try to find out the value it becomes 8.91. So, k is basically a constant multiplied by tangent value of the inclination angle. Hence, T f can be estimated by knowing the yarn count and twist. So, I can calculate k if we look at this equation and if I know the count of yarn, if I know the how many turns are there in a given length, we can find out what is the twist factor in it. So, twist factor in a way 
k in a way represents what? Represent twist angle because k is connected to alpha by a relationship which is 8.91 into tan alpha and hence it represents the severity of the twist without referring to the count of yarn. So, many a times if we want to compare between different yarns or different in terms of their counts, then you can compare the twist. If we want to compare the twist between different yarns of different counts, then you will compare them in terms of their twist factors. That will give a true idea about the character of the yarn. We cannot really compare in terms of how many twists is there for unit length when the counts of yarns are actually different from each other. So, that is the concept of twist factor. Now, having understood this, now we move on to twisting process in ring spring. How twisting takes place? The elements involved for twisting and winding are same. You have to remember this that in this particular technology, with twisting and winding are actually simultaneously taking place using the same set of elements. Therefore, these two processes are inseparable in ring spinning. We cannot really separate them from each other. If I want to twist, I have to simultaneously wind also or if I want to try to wind it, the yarn will get simultaneously twisted also because the same elements are used for twisting and winding. As you go through the lecture, you will be more and more clear. Twist is inserted as a loop of yarn rotates around the bobbin axis causing the yarn to turn on its own axis. So, what do we do? Basically, a loop of yarn is rotated continuously and the bobbin is placed within this loop of yarn which is rotating and therefore, every rotation of this loop is going to add one turn of twist. Now, if we look at this diagram, it will be clear on the right hand side what we see is that the yarn is being delivered by a pair of rollers that is delivery rollers. So, the orange line indicates the yarn path. So, the yarn is moving out of the nip of the front rollers passing through a lappet guide and then is going downwards passing through the traveler and then from a traveler it is reaching the bobbin. This is the path of the yarn. The bobbin is mounted in turn on a spindle. The spindle is here at the bottom and the bobbin is mounted on the spindle. So, the arrow indicates the flow of yarn it is moving from here going down flowing like this and ultimately reaching the bobbin surface. The ring and the spindle are coaxially mounted. Now, as the spindle rotates, the bobbin also rotates because bobbin and spindle they are actually working together. The bobbin sits on the spindle itself. So, whenever the spindle turns, the bobbin will immediately turn and therefore, it will cause bobbin to rotate as well. And when the bobbin rotates, what we are expecting now? The yarn element that is between the bobbin and the traveler that is this part of the yarn will be pulled immediately which causes the traveler to rotate as well. So, whenever the bobbin turns or rotates this yarn element in between traveler and the bobbin will be pulled and this will cause the tiny traveler or traveler we have not yet discussed. But traveler is basically a small loop of wire for the time being just remember that this is basically a small loop of wire which is resting on the ring. The blue circle 
here is indicating the ring. Ring is nothing but a track. On this track, the traveler continuously runs. So basically, it is a track for the traveler and the traveler is basically a small loop of wire, very, very tiny and the yarn element is made to pass under the traveler and then from there it is going to the bobbin. So therefore, as the bobbin turns, the yarn will be pulled and the traveler will be made to run on the track that is on the ring. Now therefore, what will happen? As the traveler runs, the loop of yarn held in between the lappet that is from here to the traveler, this loop of yarn will start rotating along with the traveler and each complete revolution of the traveler will impart one turn of twist into the yarn. So, that it is the traveler that actually causing the loop of yarn in between lappet guide and the traveler to rotate and cause yarn to be twisted. Now, when this rotates as a high speed, it looks like a balloon and therefore, we call it spinning balloon and the length of the yarn between the lappet to travel at is called balloon zone and this part that is from the front roller delivery to the lappet, this is known as spinning zone and the part of the yarn in between traveler and the bobbin is known as winding zone. So, the yarn path can be divided into three parts spinning zone, balloon zone and winding zone. So, the balloon zone is basically is the rotating part of the loop of the yarn, it rotates at high speed and therefore, it creates an envelope and which looks like a balloon. Now, we will discuss the flow of twist. Again, we take reference to the previous diagram basically. Now, if we see this diagram and look at the twist flow arrows, what we see here that twist flow is actually going in the direction opposite to the yarn flow direction. So, yarn flow direction is from top to bottom, twist flow direction is from bottom to top. Why it is happening? A twist originates in the balloon zone first, that is in between the lappet and the traveler, that is the loop which is rotating and as a result twist is originating in this part of the yarn first and when sufficient twist actually has accumulated in the balloon zone the torque will be able to overcome the resistance to torque flow at the lappet guide and therefore, this torque will flow into the spinning zone and the yarn in the spinning zone also will be twisted. So, similarly, the traveler contact point between yarn and, and the traveler is also source of obstruction to the flow of twist. Therefore, both at the lappet guide and at the traveler, there is a restriction or obstruction to the flow of twist and this obstruction is because of frictional resistance to the flow is there since the yarn is bending over there and at the contact point, there is a pressure also depending upon the tension of the yarn and hence there is a resistance to the flow of torque and therefore, the spinning zone twist will be little less than the balloon zone twist. So, balloon zone twist will be always greater than spinning zone twist and also will be greater than winding zone twist that is the twist in the final yarn that will go on to the bobbin. So, this is how the yarn is twisted and the way twist exists in the three different zones as the yarn is flowing from the front roller nib to the bobbin 
So, equilibrium twist equation is that twist is basically in this case traveler speed by yarn delivery rate which is almost equivalent to spindle speed by yarn delivery rate. So, we will see that how much is the difference between traveler speed and spindle speed. Practically traveler speed and spindle speed are practically same, but to be very accurate traveler speed will be little less than spindle speed. So, nominal twist is as given by the equation 1 tau 0 is n s by v and actual twist is actually tau a which is actual twist is n t by v or n t is the traveler speed. It is the traveler which actually insert twist, spindle is not really inserting twist, spindle causes travelers to run, to rotate and as a result of that the yarn gets twisted. Here the traveler speed and the spindle speed is related by the equation as shown here. That is the we will discuss it in more details when we will you know discuss the winding part of the yarn. That is the winding speed multiplied by the circumference of the bobbin will be always matching the delivery rate. That is the we call it winding equation and from there we will discuss this equation in more details in some other lecture. We can roughly say that therefore, that n t is n s minus v by pi d b where v is delivery rate d b is the bobbin diameter and here in a table it is shown that for a given example where delivery speed is 15 meters per minute spindle speed constant at 16000 diameter of a full curve let us say is 46 mm diameter of the beard tube or the bobbin is 25 so winding speed is going to be in this case 191 rpm for that particular diameter of the bobbin so winding speed at 46 mm diameter is going to be 104 this is the winding speed at the bare bobbin diameter 191. This is the winding speed when the diameter is going to be 46 mm. So, how much is the difference between these two is basically 16104. So, when I am winding on the 46 mm diameter the traveler speed is 15896 and when we are winding on the one is winding of the full bobbin diameter and the other one is the winding on the bare bobbin diameters. So, on the full cop diameter it is going to be actually this much 15809 and when the when the winding is it is not full cop this is going to be bare bobbin diameter at that time is 15809 and in the other case is going to be 15896. So, if we see the speed of these two the difference is very little. So, different in travel speed is 0 0.55 percent only therefore, difference with respect to spindle speed it is only 0 0.65 to 1.19 percent. So, the difference between spindle speed and traveler speed is hardly 0.65 percent or 1.2 percent. So, these, these are so little that for all practical purpose we consider spindle speed to be equivalent to traveler speed and with that we do the calculation of twist because that will not going to give you much uh, no, difference in the values of twist. Now, we will discuss the spindle. A spindle is shown on the right hand side of the diagram. The spindle consists of two parts, a blade and a bolster. 
So, there is a top part and there is a bottom part, the top part is the blade and the bottom part is the bolster. The upper part is made of aluminum alloy and tapered in the ratio of 1 is to 64. Near the upper and lower ends, it has bobbin or tube gripping devices, somewhere here and somewhere there, we have devices which will be able to grip the bare bobbin when you insert the bobbin on the spindle. The idea is unless the grip is there, the bobbin is going to vibrate. So, we have to grip the bobbin and that gripping device is there at the somewhere at the top and the bottom of the blade. The lower end of the upper part, this, this upper part, blade part, lower end, this part terminates into a hole which is formed as a bell so that it can be placed over the neck bearing in bolster. The valve is here as shown in the diagram. The tape, the driving tape will be running on this ward and will turn the spindle. As a result, tensile force generates by the drive of the tape and acts on the bearing itself. So, this is here the blade part, the warp is here, the ring is here and the balloon control ring is here, the lappet guide is also is shown in the diagram. Now, the bolster part we need to know. The bolster is made of cast iron or steel and is fixed on the ring rail. The diagram is shown here. A chamber between spindle blade and the bolster hold the lubricating oil. So, lubricating oil is placed somewhere here. The neck bearing is shown also. It can be a journal, ball or roller bearing. The bearing as shown here, neck bearing. The journal bearing reduces noise, but energy absorption rises. Ball bearings are less robust than roller bearing and have a shorter lifetime but roller bearings are nowadays mostly used in most of the spindles because they give stable running of the spindle. And the foot bearing which is here, this is here we have foot bearing. Foot bearing is flexible, it can swing laterally to a limited degree and thus spindle becomes self centering. So, the spindle is a source of vibration and therefore, lot of design inputs have gone into the designing of the spindle from the point of view of reducing the energy consumption and to ensure that it does not vibrate because there will be so many spindles which has to run while the machine is working. Today, most of the machines will be having almost 2000 spindles. So, when all of them needs to be run we have to ensure that they do not create too much of vibration, so the otherwise the whole machine will vibrate and individual spindle vibration will lead to end breakage. So, there are slots through which the oil can circulate as it runs, this these are the slots, oil circulation slot, so that the spindles can run smoothly without causing much wear and tear and also lubrication will help to reduce the energy consumption. This vibration damping is something which is important also and we should know it that is since spindle is the source of vibration and uh, therefore, we have to make sure that the there has to be some, if there is a mechanism in you know in the design itself, so that the vibration can be dampened, then that is will be a good design. And some designs which are there is shown here, that is, is, is this damping of the vibration is accomplished by spiral springs, damping sleeves or damping oil around steel tube. If the spindle is displaced laterally, that in this diagram, as shown here, the spiral spring is going to be compressed. This is a spiral spring which is here. If the spindle moves laterally because of vibration, 
So, it is basically vibration basically means that it is that little oscillation is there in its movement. So, the spring will be compressed while therefore flows from the compressed side to the other where the gap is opening up. So, this side gets compressed and this side gap between the coil is opening up. The resistance that the oil has to overcome leads to damping of the vibration of the foot bearing and finally, the vibration of the blade as a whole. This is how the vibration damping takes place. The chamber between the blade and the bolster is filled with oil which is replaced after 10,000 to 20,000 operating hours. So, initially we fill up the bolster with oil which is here and oil has a life after 10,000 or 20,000 operating hours because of the constant you know, shear that is happening between the oil and the rotating spindle the oil gets burnt out and after 10,000 to 20,000 working hours, we have to replace this burnt out oil by fresh oil. That is what is practiced in the industry. So, what is the influence of spindle with respect to spinning? One is spindle design affects power consumptions. See, the maximum power is consumed because of the rotation of the spindle, because spindle is quite heavy. It is a long as you see here in the diagram. We want to reduce the weight therefore, alloys are used nowadays in making the spindle. Idea is to reduce power consumptions. So, spindle design has lot of influence on the power consumption and power consumption is really extremely important especially for spinning. Imbalance and eccentric which relative to the ring affects yarn quality and end breakages. If the spindle is not properly balanced, dynamic balancing of the spindle we are talking about and if it is little eccentric that means manufacturing precision has to be very, very good. Any eccentricity will lead to vibration and a vibration in turn will lead to end breakage. And therefore, the manufacturing precision also is very, very important. One has to ensure that the centering of the spindle with respect to ring is also very, very accurate. So, that, is, that the spindle must be placed at the center of the ring. Ring as I have said that it is basically a track for the traveler. So, ring is also circular the spindle will be placed exactly at the center of this ring. The yarn guiding devices, one is the lappet. So, lappet as shown here is mounted above each spindle and is located over spindle axis. See, this is the spindle. So, this location is, if this is the axis of the spindle, it is just placed above the spindle axis. Basically, it is a bent wire attached to a pivotable support arm. So, this is the pivotable support arm and which is fixed onto a lappet rail which is this extending over the full length of the machine. So, the lappet rail is there and the rail is extending over the entire length of the machine and on this rail the lappets are mounted and it is also pivotable. So, that I can lift it. During winding of cob, the lappet rail also moves as that of ring rail, but with short strokes. So, the lappet rail, this rail is also given movement. As a ring rail, we will see that when you discuss the bobbin building part, that the, all the rings are also mounted on a rail. And this rail is not stationary, the rail is made to move up and down in order to build the bobbin, in order to fill up the bobbin with yarn. So, as it moves up and down the ring rail, we need to also move the lappet rail as well, but with short stroke. We will see that 
as we actually when we actually discuss the winding part of the bobbin, then we will we'll come to know the why we do we need to move it up and down. Uh, the reason also has been given here that the movement ensures the difference in balloon height during ring rail movement does not become too large. We will see that the balloon size keeps on changing when we build the bobbin and the size of the balloon since it changes too much variation will lead to too much tension variation also and that may cause problem in terms of end breakage where the thread is going to break frequently. To avoid that the lappet rail is made to also move up and down, but we will discuss it in more details when we will actually take it up in some other lecture. Idea is to reduce tension variation, we need to move the lappet guide up and down too. The lappet guide has to be centered time to time, sometimes there is a disturbance, so we need to center them and since the yarn touches the inner surface of the lappet, see when the yarn is coming from the front roller, it is coming into contact. So, suppose I draw this line from here, here I have the two rollers, the yarn is coming and coming into contact with the lappet guide, but it is actually touching the inner part of the lappet guide. So, the yarn touches the inner surface of the lappet guide and therefore, the point of setting device this is the setting device must be directed towards the inner edge. So, the, while centering we have to make sure that this, this device which is actually put on the spindle in order to centering the lappet guide with respect to the spindle axis, we have to make sure that this conical part is closer to the inner part of the lappet guide. Because that is the part which is actually coming into contact with the yarn when the yarn is being delivered. So, now another important device with respect to twisting is balloon control ring. We will now discuss what is this balloon control ring, what exactly it controls. The name itself signifies that it is going to control the balloon and it is going to actually control the diameter of the balloon. See the package remains within the balloon envelope. See here we are showing you the spinning balloon on the right hand side. You see the package, the entire spindle is actually within the balloon. So, the balloon should be large enough to hold to make sure that the package remains within it, it will should not contact the package, but the package should always remain at the center of the balloon. So, package has to remain within the balloon envelope, larger package if we want to make we mean long and large balloon to be made. So, if we want to increase the package size in order to increase the content of yarn in a package, then you have to go for larger and larger balloon. Now, the point is long and large balloon if we want to generate, it means very large diameter balloons which will cause space problem. That means, between spindles we will need more space and therefore, the number of spindles that will be able to accommodate in a given length of yarn, given length of machine will be less if the balloon size becomes too large, because we have to make sure the two neighboring balloons should not collide under any substance in any circumstances. So, the balloon diameter increases, the distance between the two spindles also has to increase and as a result the number of spindles that we will be able to accommodate in a given length of the machine will go down. And large dimension balloon means higher air drag on yarn and possibility of balloon collapse that is also another problem that we are going to face. 
So what is the solution? Solution is we have to increase yarn tension in this case if we want to go for larger balloon using heavy traveler and the consequence could be possibility of frequent end breakage. So if we want to increase tension in order to avoid balloon collapse, the other negative effect could be frequent end breaks. So therefore, the solution is to use balloon control ring as shown here. This is a balloon control ring. It divides the balloon into two smaller sub balloons which are stable. When we will discuss the balloon mechanics, we will try to you know, explain how balloon control ring is going to produce two sub balloons and thereby trying to avoid the collapsing tendency of a large balloon. So, the problem can be mitigated by having a balloon control ring, basically just a ring and the balloon is made to stay within it and the yarn rotates within this. So, BCR enables operation with long spindle with higher revolution while yarn tensor remains at acceptable level by having because we do not need to put a heavy traveler. The balloon control ring is going to make two small balloons and hence we can manage the situation by having this. The danger is that the rubbing of the yarn against the BCR surface, balloon control ring surface, the yarn is in contact here and here also and is continuously rubbing the inner wall of the balloon control ring. So, the yarn may get roughened leading to hairiness and fly liberations. It can generate heat creating possible melt spot with thermoplastic yarns. This possibility could be there and the BCR also moves up and down with the ring rail, but with short strokes. So, as I have said that the ring rail moves up and down. Earlier we have seen the lappet guide also moves up and down. The balloon control ring is also moves up and down. So, they are all given some kind of movement and we will discuss about them in more details while discussing winding. So, this also moves up and down with short strokes. Now, other thing which we have is balloon separators. Here the balloon separators are shown in this diagram. These are the balloon separators. This is nothing but a simple small a plate which we keep between two spindles as shown it here. When an end breaks during spinning, the broken yarn end lashes on the neighboring balloons causing further ends down. This is what basically problematic that if by any chance a yarn break, the rotating yarn will try to fly away from the bobbin surface and will come into contact with neighboring balloon and thereby will cause the neighboring balloons to break and that food could be a chain reaction. So, a large number of ends will break one after the other because of this reason. So, to avoid this, we need balloon separating plates. So, therefore, we see here the balloon separating plates are there and in once we have it, even if the end broken end of the yarn which is on the bobbin surface is tries to fly away, it is going to hit this separator plate only, it is not going to come into contact with the neighboring balloon and hence the end breakage, too many end breakages could be avoided. Now we go to another important element of the twisting process, we call it ring and we will also discuss about traveler. Now some rings are shown here, it is a narrow vertical cylindrical steel band with horizontal flange that projects at right angle. See this is the flange, this is the flange, this is the flange, these are the flanges. 
it acts as a track for the traveler that runs on it. So, here we see the tiny traveler, there is a traveler over here, there is a traveler over here, just a small ring which is placed on the circular track which we call it ring and it acts the, the ring acts as a track for the traveler. The vertical part of the is the wave part and the horizontal part is the flange. So, this vertical part is the wave part and the horizontal part that we see that is called the flange part. The rings are fixed on a ring rail by screws and it is centered around the spindle. So, the spindle must stay at the center of the ring. Types of ring, rings could be lubricated and unlubricated and unlubricated rings we can have single sided ring or we have double sided ring. The here we are showing the flange part and the wave part. So, this is the flange part as it is shown it here and the flange width may vary between 3.2 mm, 3.7 mm, 4.1 mm typical and the internal diameter as we shown here in the diagram it could be 38, 40, 42 these are the typical diameters of ring. If you classification single flange and double flange the diagram is shown here. Single flange, these rings have one flange, this is the flange that we see here one side, the other side there is no flange here. So, this is called basically single flange ring. Double flange means there is another flange on the other side. So, the top and bottom flange is used by the traveler. Once the top flange becomes unusable, after years of service, the bottom part is cleaned and used after refitting the ring worn out part again. So, what we do? First we use one of the side after some you know, months of use or years of use when you find that it is no more workable, we simply now go to the other side. We clean it up and the other side is brought to the top and that part can also act as a track for the traveler. This is so therefore, these are very simple single flange and double flange. The other classification could be according to shape, there is a reduced ring and enlarged ring. So, this is reduced ring. If you look at the diagram, we will see that diameter of the flange of the ring is smaller than the diameter of the lower part. So, this side diameter is more than this side and therefore, it is a conical shape, both are actually conical shape but here the top part is less in diameter in comparison to the bottom part. So, that is what is called reduced ring. So, use of reduced ring makes it possible to have smaller ring diameter than what for that than that for which the ring holder was built. And the opposite of this is the enlarged ring as shown in the diagram. The flange diameter is larger than the diameter of the lower part of the ring. So, use of enlarged ring makes it possible to have larger ring diameter than that for which the ring holder was built. So, this kind of ring is also available and the classification in terms of the contact zone between ring and traveler. See the first is anti wage ring. The ring has enlarged flange. So, this part of the flange if you look at it that this part is enlarged on the inner side and flattened on the upper part. This part is flattened. This form permits the use of traveler with low center of gravity allowing high speed operations. The purpose is that by having we can the contact area from here to there between the ring and the travel ad has been enhanced. Due to this the heat dissipation is will be faster from travel ad to ring and 
therefore speed can be increased and more the speed means more production. The low crown ring, the curvature of the upper surface has been flattened to give more space for the passage of the yarn. So, here this part it has been flattened as shown in the diagram, so that the yarn cross section is shown here, the yarn can easily pass without really rubbing the ring surface. The whole purpose of doing this is to create enough space for the yarn to pass in between the ring and the traveler. And the other one is another is SU ring, it is of Soviet origin, it has a larger surface area of contact that is the surface area from here to there, very large surface area of contact traveler with the inner flange and therefore good heat transfer is possible in this case. So, basically people have trying to play with the contact area between the traveler and the ring in terms of design modification. The other thing is that how to create enough space for the yarn to pass through in between the traveler and the ring. So, that the abrasion of the yarn with the ring is can be minimized. If we cannot avoid it, at least we will try to minimize it. The ring has to be tough and hard on its exteriors. The material part of the ring now we will discuss. The running surface is most important. See, because continuously two metallic pieces are abrading with respect to each other. The ring is made of some metal alloy, the traveler is also. So, therefore, there is a contact between two metals in a way and hence it is very, very important to ensure that uh, the wear and tear can be minimized in order to enhance the life of the ring and traveler as well. The surface layer should have high hardness, the hardness value is given. The traveler hardness is 650 to 700 whereas, the hardness value of the ring top surface is 800 to 850 vikers. The travelers therefore, wears out, we allow traveler to wear out faster because it is softer in a way in comparison to the ring because travel is cheaper and it is easier to replace, we can easily replace them. So, you allow traveler to be less hard in comparison to the ring. Surface smoothness should be high, but not too high since otherwise lubricating film cannot build up. We will discuss it the formation of lubricating film and therefore, the surface has to be smooth, but should not be too smooth. So, what could be the consequence of that? We will discuss in as we go through this lecture. The material is flame or induction hardened steel, nitride steel, carbonitride steel, and chrome steel. So, various types of alloys are used in manufacturing the ring. The other thing is rotating ring. The limitation of enhancing the spindle speed is due to frictional heat generation in traveler. So, there is always a uh, an effort to increase the speed of the spindle, so that we can increase the production rate. So, there are various types of limitations that why we cannot go for very high speed of the spindle. One of the reason is frictional heat generation in traveler and therefore, the traveler gets burned very quickly. So, what we need to do with the avoid generation of heat, 
that could be another problem that is ion tension and energy consumption if we go for high speed. And the other thing is rapid transfer of heat out of the traveler. Is it possible so that the heat from the traveler can be transferred faster to the ring because ring and traveler they are in contact with each other. So, that could be two solutions to tackle the heat part. One is improvement through thermal heat transfer. It is only in small steps and hence limited because the contact area between ring and traveler they are so less that too much heat transfer is not expected. So, improvement there is very, very limited or what we can do to reduce the generation of heat reduce relative speed between ring and traveler. The ring and the traveler rotate together, the ring floats in air and functions as rotor being drawn along the traveler. So, what we can do that the ring does not remain stationary, but we allow the ring to also rotate. So, if the traveler and the ring both rotate together then the relative speed between them will be less and as a result the frictional heat generation will be less. The ring then floats in air. So, there is a we have to this is what has been done that the ring will be placed in a pressurized air chamber. So, that is actually floats and function as a rotor being drawn along the traveler. However, if we do so during starting up traveler rotates first until centrifugal force and hence contact pressure between ring and traveler reaches a level at which drive is transmitted to ring. The moment we switch on the machine first the traveler will pick up speed and when sufficient speed has developed then only the ring will be able to rotate. So, initially the ring is much heavier in comparison to traveler. So, whenever the we switch on the machine the traveler will rotate first and once sufficient speed has been gained by the traveler the contact pressure will increase between traveler and the ring and now the traveler will be in a position to drag the ring. So, that is what is going to happen the problems are basically high cost and requirement of braking device whenever the, the yarn is going to break we have to stop the ring also or the ring is basically also rotating. So, we have to have a braking device. So, these are the problems with rotating ring people have tried, but commercially not very successful. The next part that we are going to discuss now is travelers. We have discussed about ring, a traveler is a tiny loop of wire basically. So, purpose of traveler by now you have already understood twisting and it helps in winding. high centrifugal force actually acts on it. The contact pressure between traveler and ring can go to the order of 35 Newton per millimeter square. It is a huge pressure. See per millimeter square it can go to 35 Newton and 35 Newton is close to how much? Almost close to 3.5 kg force. Very, very high pressure and therefore, lot of frictional heat is generated because of the centrifugal force and the force is a function of traveler mass, ring diameter and the angular speed of the traveler or velocity of the traveler. We can express centrifugal force as m r omega square or m p square by r. At normal speed, ring temperature 
is greater than 5 to 10 degrees centigrade of the environment. Traveler temperature can go beyond 300 degrees centigrade due to poor heat transfer, that is what is possible. So, traveler temperature could be much higher than the ring temperature. Low mass of traveler does not permit a dissipation of heat in short time in that is available causing limitation in operating speed. The problem we face because the mass of the traveler is very, very low and therefore, whatever heat it gains because of the friction between the ring and the traveler, it does not get sufficient time to dissipate that heat and therefore, it gets continuously it is dissipating heat energy and hence temperature rises continuously and can go very, very high and this high temperature can in some cases can uh, create melt spot in the case of thermoplastic yarns. The form of travelers is a number of forms are shown here. The form should be such that the contact area between ring and traveler is maximum. The this contact area as it is shown here or here, here, here. You will have basically trying to ensure that this contact area is maximum. We have to ensure that the traveler should not be too heavy also because for different fineness we need different weight. So, for a given weight how to increase the contact area also we have to keep in mind the constant that the there has to be sufficient space for the yarn to pass through. The CG of the traveler should be low for smooth running of the ring. There should be adequate space between ring and traveler for smooth passage of the yarn, otherwise the, the yarn would be rubbed leading to fly generation, hairiness and melting or melt spot. So, these are the various you know, requirement on the shape of the traveler and these are the various four different forms are shown here, C type of traveler, flat or oval type of traveler, elliptical traveler and N type of traveler. These are the four different forms which are commercially available. The wire profile can also affect, it can affect the contact surface of the ring, this it affects the smooth running, it can affect the thermal heat transfer because profile can also affect the contact area, the yarn clearance, the roughness effect and the hairiness effect. So, the wire profile that is constructional shape of the wire of the traveler can have, can have various influences. So, that also is we have to keep in mind. Material, the material to be used for making the traveler should have following requirements, it should generate little heat, quickly distribute the heat from the area where it develops over the whole volume of the traveler, transfer the heat to the ring and air, be elastic for pushing the traveler on the ring. See the way the travelers are pushed on the ring surface, it has to be little elastic, it should not be brittle in nature. Otherwise, when you push the traveler to fit it on the ring, the traveler is going to break. So, some amount of elasticity is required. It has to be high wear resistant. So, so many demands are there on the material, hardness to be less than ring so that it wears out faster than ring and the materials which suits is steel, pure steel does not fulfill all requirement and hence surface treatment is given that is we electroplating with nickel or silver. So, use steel and steel by itself cannot do the job properly 
and therefore, electroplating is done either with nickel or with silver. Chemical treatments also is given to reduce friction. Next comes traveler mass is also important. It determines the magnitude of the centrifugal force and the formula for the force is given here. Low mass centrifugal force is a function of m, velocity of the traveler and r is the ring diameter. So, low mass basically means low centrifugal force and therefore, low yarn tensions and hence it may lead to soft package at the same time it can create less end breakage, but the package will be may be soft. High mass if we use high tension leading to possibly high end breakage, but the package will not be soft, package will be quite hard. So, therefore, these are the two extreme low mass, high mass. So, you have to choose the right mass keeping in mind the softness of the package that we are going to build and also we have to see that end breakages remain within acceptable limit. So, mass must match the yarn fineness, yarn strength and spindle speed. Accordingly, the mass is selected. When a choice is available, heavier mass to be chosen always as it gives greater cop weight because the package is going to be hard not soft. So, content of yarn is going to be more if we use a heavy mass. Smooth running of traveler, traveler runs on the track or the ring smoothly if the mass is heavy and better transfer of heat from traveler to ring because better contact will be established between ring and traveler when the mass is heavy, centrifugal force will be more. So, the traveler will be pressed against the ring with a higher force and hence more contact between ring and traveler. So, more heat transfer will be possible. So, that a advantage is there. Traveler mass for the synthetic fiber, if we compare with the you know cotton, then traveler mass is always greater when you compare with respect to cotton or synthetic fiber yarn. Heavier traveler leads to stable running without fluttering. Fluttering means the kind of noise that the traveler makes when it runs because it vibrates. So, heavier traveler is used to avoid fluttering and heavy traveler helps in dissipating heat faster which is very important for synthetic fibers. Otherwise, traveler temperature will go high, there is a chance of melt spot to be formed on the yarn. Here is a you know, traveler numbers are given is a guideline that yarn fineness and corresponding traveler number for cotton for synthetics and we see here that the traveler number is nothing as it has been mentioned here, but ISO number is weight of 1000 traveler in gram that is the ISO number of traveler. These are all ISO numbers which is stated. So, when the yarn is fine 120, the number is less. As you go down, the yarn becomes coarser. As you go down, the yarn becomes coarser and the traveler numbers become more and more. So, traveler becomes heavy. So, this is a guideline and uh, which can be followed while we are trying to select the traveler for a given count. But some adjustment is required because it also depends upon the type of spindle speed that we are going to choose, the diameter of the ring and the, uh, the quality of fiber being used, but this is just a guideline. Another aspect in this context is important that is called fiber lubrication film. The passage of yarn under the traveler causes projecting ends of fibers to be scraped off by the traveler along with the natural wax. See when the yarn is being made, the yarn is 
passing under the traveler. There is a continuous abrasion between the traveler and the yarn, especially for cotton. So, what would happen? That some projecting ends of the fibers will be scraped off as well as the wax along with it. And these scraped off tiny fiber ends and the wax will deposit on the ring surface and will be get crushed by the centrifugal force of the traveler with time and it form a paste. So, as they deposit with time they get crushed by the pressure of the traveler against the ring and it forms a paste because temperature is quite high there. Gradually a lubricating film builds up on the ring surface and the traveler runs on it and hence we do not need any lubrication, any additional lubrication when we are processing cotton fiber. The natural wax and the tiny fragments of cotton fiber is basically makes a film which is deposited on the entire surface of the ring on which the traveler is running and that acts as a lubricating film. At times the film may get scraped off from the ring, but get replaced soon. Sometimes it may get get popped because of the abrasion between ring and traveler, but at the same time there is continuous flow of yarn is there within few minutes again the film is replaced. The position, form and structure of the film depends upon the yarn fineness, raw material, traveler mass and its speed, height of the traveler bow. So many factors are there on which the film that deposits, the nature of the film, the thickness of the film, this all depends upon the fineness of the yarn that you are making, the raw material type, whether it is 100 percent cotton or blended material, the mass of the traveler, what is the speed of, because these two will affect the centrifugal force which will crush the fragments of fibers and the wax. The height of the traveler bow is also important that decides what is the level of friction between yarn and the traveler. So, all this will affect the lubricating film formation. With fine yarn, the film hardly builds up as centrifugal force is low due to low traveler weight. Hence, the speed of the traveler is kept low. So, whenever we are trying to process fine yarn, we keep the speed low. One, because of this reason that the lubricating film does not develop. The other reason is that these yarns are also weak because they are very, very fine. Hence, we have to keep the traveler speed low. With this, we close this session on twisting. Thank you.